Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to study 10 points about angioid streaks. This is Dr. Ipshita. So what are angioid streaks? They are bilateral crack-like breaks. Where do we find them? We find them in the brittle, thickened and calcified Brooks membrane. What's the etiology for this? Most often they are spontaneous. They can be associated with minor trauma. Any trauma, even minor trauma can cause angioid streaks. 50% of them have systemic associations. So there's a mnemonic for the systemic associations. It's Pepsi. P stands for Pseudoxanthoma elasticum. What is this? This is a disease of the connective tissue. There is degeneration of the elastic fibers which affect the skin, eyes and the cardiovascular system. We have to remember that in skin it has a plucked chicken appearance which affects the neck, axilla and anticubital fossa. E stands for Ehler Danlos. The other P stands for Pejets. S is sickle cell disease and I is idiopathic. So what is the pathology? The pathology lies in the fact that the Brooks membrane becomes thickened, brittle and calcified which leads to breaks. These breaks are known as angioid streaks. What are the symptoms? Most patients are asymptomatic. Symptoms develop only when complications occur. They lead to visual loss like when choroidal neovascularization develops. So what are the signs of angioid streaks? They are grey or dark red linear lesions. They have jagged edges and they form a in, they intercommunicate in a ring like fashion from an area of peripapillary mottling. In case of uh, pseudoxanthoma elasticum, they have a podorange appearance. What are the complications of this disease? The complications are choroidal neovascularization. Then we have choroidal rupture, which can happen with minor traumas. And that is why we do we avoid scleral indentation in such patients because we ourselves with scleral indentation can contribute to an additional break. What are the differential diagnosis that comes to mind? Placker cracks. Again, choroidal rupture. We can also have differential of toxo and histoplasmosis. When we think of investigations, they are autofluorescent. So we can, if we do autofluorescence, we can see them as autofluorescent. They are also seen on red free photography. If we do an FA, they will be hyperfluorescent window defect because of the RP atrophy over the breaks. FA is also useful when we want to detect the choroidal neovascularization. Coming to treatment, we need to observe this patient and keep them under follow-up. For systemic association, they need a physician referral. And in case they uh, they should be warned that contact sport might be dangerous and if they are involved in such activity, protective glasses are needed. If choroidal neovascularization develop, then they need intravitreal anti-vegif or laser photocoagulation 
or photodynamic therapy. So these are the 10 points about angioid streaks that we need to remember. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends and family and also please kindly subscribe to my channel. If there are topics you'd like me to cover, please leave them in the comment section. Hope this was helpful. Thank you.